And good morning to you. It's Friday the 16th of August 2013. Chris Reardon with this morning's United Kingdom talk. A very important day because my sister today has become even older than she was yesterday. I'm so pleased to hear that. I really am. Unfortunately, she's never going to really catch up with me. Uh, but it is her birthday, so I would like to sing to her. Do you mind? She's not actually watching live this morning. Uh, she should watch the recording a little bit later on. I've got her a nice present. Um, after some of you sent in some rather odd, odd suggestions at what I should get for my birthday present, uh, what I should get for my sister's birthday present. Now, where are they now? Oh, where's my parlour? But there it is. Uh, <coughs> Ian Duff in Canada. <coughs> I think she, she's either 48 or 46. By the way, uh, a bit of a short show today, I'm afraid, because it's, it's, it's a busy day. Got to go down the hospital to have my feet looked at again. Plus, my voice is not quite there. Can you hear it? <coughs> I'm, I'm trying to project, but there's nothing coming out. We are slightly devoid of normal vocal characteristics this morning. We are. There's not a lot coming out there. Um, Ian says if she's 40, she's either 46 or 40, 48, I think. If she's 46 and still has kids around the house, what about a bull whip and a bottle of scotch? That's what Ian suggested. I don't know if my sister's in this whips or not really, Ian. I must be honest. Um, I, I can't lie to you. I think I prefer not to think about that sort of thing, Ian. But thank you for bringing it to my attention. You never know, do you? What goes on behind those closed doors? You just don't know. Uh, Marge says get her a free beauty treatment at a local spa or at least a discount on a hairdo. Well, now that was a good idea because, of course, my niece cuts hair. So I was thinking maybe I could get my niece to cut her hair and she would do it cheaper for me as I'm her uncle. But then I thought perhaps not. So, yes, I like the idea of that. I would love that, but it might be taken the wrong way. Oh, oh, oh I know what you mean. I, sort of the thing is, quote, are you suggesting I'm ugly enough to have a beauty treatment? And all that. Um, she says something to pamper her or make her queen for a day. Um, so, so that's good. Um, I'm thinking about that. I did think about that. And indeed, Marge, that is what I got. So I got my sister, I got my, my niece, actually, um, to take her to a beauty thing. So I sent my niece the money, and that's where they are on their way at the moment to this beauty thing. And they spend the whole day there having bits and pieces to them. But uh, what I didn't realise, it was buy two, get one free. So she's taken her husband as well, Martin, which is all very nice for her. I didn't know men were allowed to go to that. I thought it was a ladies' thing, but uh, she's taken her husband uh, as well. Um, and uh, my niece is going, and they're going to spend an entire day. I think they have lunch, and they have massages and things put on their face. And all. I actually don't, I've got to be honest with you, between you and me, come here, listen carefully, I don't believe in beauty, tra I don't think they work, you know. I mean, of course, if, if my sister does a little FaceTime on her Apple iPhone with me, then I will, of course, tell her how wonderful and beautiful and much younger she looks. But I'm not sure they actually work like that, are they? Do you actually look younger after having a few bits of cucumber shoved over your face and all this cream rubbed in? Have you ever had one of those beauty treatment things and then perhaps looked in the mirror and thought either, oh, well, I look a lot younger now, or, oh, I don't look any different? What do you think? Do let us know. The email address to this show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Send in an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, this show is, of course, recorded live on Friday mornings at 10.30. You may well be with us live this morning. If it's coming up to 25, it's just gone 25 to 11 on Friday the 16th of August 2013, and you're watching or listening, then you are indeed with us live, and you can join in live by two methods, either Skype, my Skype username is 
All one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's the Skype username, Chris Reardon. All right? Or you can join in by phone number. We have a local London number, 020-8133-6358, OK? 020-8133-6358. Am I a little bit quiet or am I all right? I'm just concerned. A little bit quiet, am I? Shall I, shall I whack it up a little bit? Just a little bit? How's that? Is that better? Sorry, I don't, don't want you to use too much electricity trying to get any more sound out of me. But the voice is going today, so there we are. Uh, good morning to Shania, who's with us week in, week out, aren't you, Shania? She's on the Isle of Wight, and she says, Morning, Chris. She's busy typing away a, a little message as I look at her little chat box on there. Yeah, it'd be lovely if you want to talk on the phone as well, as I say. Skype username Chris Reardon or phone number 020 That's only if you're with us live on this Friday morning with the time coming up to uh, 22.11. Um, she says, I can only watch for a bit as I've got to go to work and then do Ventnor Carnival events this evening. Well, that's OK, because we're not we're not going to be with you the whole the whole um hour today i think we'll, we'll be lucky if we get to 45 minutes because i am a bit pushed for time tonight shania but thank you for your concern and understanding it is appreciated so uh that's that <clears throat> where's my bit of papers gone things to talk about I had a lovely time yesterday actually um my one of my nephews and his wife gary and stacy came down with their two children uh, evie and harry and we're supposed to be down here actually at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, but they didn't get here till nearly two o'clock because of uh, traffic problems coming up from uh, coming down from Lincolnshire. And uh, we went out to a carvery. I think I only spent about two with two hours with them in the end. It's sort of like half a day, but better than nothing, isn't it? We went out to the uh, carvery in uh, Langley, which is near Slough. Uh, down here in the south and a very nice meal as usual you know we had the great big plate of food i just have the vegetables being vegetarian i just have the vegetables but that's i mean believe it or not that really is enough but i was a bit naughty because at night i also had a subway a foot long subway from the place i worked at in clapham just down the road from there across the road from there uh, they have a subway there so i had one of those so i was rather piggish yesterday I'm feeling quite fat today. I'm trying to cover it. I've put a mauve shirt on today. Is that supposed to be, like, mauve? Isn't that supposed to be for peace and, and tranquility, mauve? I don't feel very peaceful or tranquil this morning, to be honest. I just wish the voice, the noise, the noise would come out of my mouth. It's not coming out, is it? Shania says, hope you feel better soon. I don't feel ill, Shania. It's just the voice is, it's annoying when it won't come out. You're trying to make all this sound and nothing's happening. So that was nice. Gary and Stacey are down for their uh, friend's wedding. Uh, Jody and... Oh, I can't remember her name now. <clears throat> anyway, they're down for a wedding, which I think is happening in the Roehampton area, which is where I bought up, where, where I was brought up, actually, Roehampton. It was nice. It was nice in the 70s and uh, 80s, so they're down for that. And a little bit of a disappointment, boys and girls. A little bit of a disappointment. Do you remember I told you Barry Manilow was doing concert at Fort Lauderdale? in florida well i decided i wouldn't go to that one um really because I, I didn't know the area i'm very funny going to foreign countries if i don't really know the area i get terrified i'm going to get lost absolutely terrified especially driving around however this week uh was advertised that barry manilow was go where there is a picture of his of himself in a white jacket on my wall is going to do a concert in Orlando so that's kind of the Disney area Disney great universal sea world it's like almost the holiday capital of the world some people call it I have been extremely lucky and been to Florida three times the last time completely on my own so I thought about it and I thought oh go on then not only that it was mentioned on the Barry Manilow fan club, of which I am a member, that Barry has some platinum tickets. Now, there's only a few of these. OK? These platinum tickets... Oh, we've got a phone call. Just a minute. Good morning. Good morning. Nope, no one there. OK, so Barry Manilow has... Um, platinum tickets, which I've told you about before. 
these are the tickets where you get a front row seat, you get a champagne reception, which does, doesn't really bother me because I don't really drink. Oh, I might have a little glass of champagne. It only takes me one glass, though, and I'm under the table. You know, oh, can you just imagine me after having half a glass and then me? Oh, right, Bazaar, how's it going, mate? <laughs> so you have that, that glass of champagne, champagne reception. You get a front row seat and you get to meet Barry for a few minutes on your own and have a photo taken. It's quite expensive, but this all goes to his um, charity where I think he collects musical instruments and things for um, poor children. So, I thought, well, you've got to make up your mind quickly because there's only a few of these tickets. So I decided I would do it. <clears throat> and you had to ring at 10 o'clock California time yesterday morning. So that would be 6 p.m. our time last night. So I'm sitting in front of the computer. Half past five, I started sitting here. I've got my credit cards here. You should have seen it. I should have filmed it, actually. Uh, I've got my credit cards here. I've got my bit of paper telling me what to do. I've got two phones here. I'm looking at this clock. And I thought I'd just try the number a couple of times before six o'clock. So I rang this number. And, of course, you've got the answer phone. You know, this, 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 this answer phone thing came up. And I thought, well, that's the right number. That's it. So six o'clock comes, I start ringing. And, it, you know, bang on six o'clock. So I rang up, and, it, and then you got through to a different answer phone. The first answer phone you got through to before six, it told you that the office was closed. Now I was getting through to an answer phone telling me, uh, press one to go here or press four. So I pressed four. It said you needed your membership number. Now, I couldn't find my membership number for love of money, but I knew I was a member because I was logged in to the Barry Manilow fan club. You can't do that if you haven't got a number. But it doesn't ask you for the number to log in, you see. Oh, we've got, let's try this phone call again. One second. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Who's that there? It's Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Hello, I was just oh. hearing you tell your story. I'm just telling the story yeah, now. Hold on, you finish telling it. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you going to wait there? Yeah. Okay, then. I'm going to put my phone down until okay. I finish telling my story, all right? Yep. Right, stay there. But, but... Just make sure I can hear you. Oh, can you hear me all can right? I switch, I, I've switched you off. Oh, you, <laughs> you can hear me on the phone, though, can't you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you on the phone. So, I'm sitting here with all these bits of paper, and I've got the answer. Different answer phone now, telling me to dial one for something, but dial four, and I didn't have the membership number, right? So, I'm then on Facebook... And I picked up Wendy, not literally, you know, just on the Facebook talking to her. And I told her about this. She said, oh, don't worry about that. Um, she said that they'll be used to that sort of thing. You know, people losing. Now, I always lose numbers and things like that. But I knew I was a member because I was logged into the site. The thing is, when you log into the site, it never asks you for the number. It asks you for your email address and password. So you log in, but on nowhere on that site is your, is your membership number. Um, so I thought that was a bit odd, a bit strange, really. Anyway, so this started at six o'clock. By 20, four, 20 past six, I'm still trying it, and I'm talking to Wendy on the uh, Facebook, and she says, no, keep trying, keep trying. And then we went on to uh, try and do it on the internet, but that particular p section of the fan club, um, which is like a, 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 the Barry Manilow fun thing, that was asking you for your membership number. So, of course, I couldn't go any further. So I was stuck with just doing it on the phone. Eventually, I got through at 25 past six and it started ringing. And then I pressed four and instead of getting the answer phone, it rang. For <gasps> oh, my God, it's ringing. And the excitement bit. And then it went to the engage tone. It did that three times. And then just before half past six, I got through, it rang, and a lovely American lady answered, only to tell me that all the tickets had gone. And she also told me they'd all been sold online. Oh, I can't believe it. It's someone at the door now. Hang on a minute, Wendy. OK. Oh, dear. Back in a second. I know you're excited. <sighs>
back, just a minute. Oh dear, sorry about that. Oh blimey. Up and done. I always keep having blooming things delivered now. Have you noticed that on a Friday whenever I'm trying to do this? Um, I've got, I've got a delivery from it. I don't even know what it is. I've got a big box from Amazon there. I can't remember what that is. Um, so that was it. Rather disappointing. You know, and that's the way it is. I can, I can just imagine some people start shouting down the phone, but it's completely pointless. There were so many tickets. They go. That's all there is to it. The lady did, however, tell me that they sold all the tickets online. Literally, as soon as they were released, bang, they were gone. So yeah, that's, that's, how, that's obviously you. how to they do were, it. You have to do it online and not by the phone, because she said there were no tickets left after that. And that's it. So I then said to her, oh, well, I said, can I go to the front row tickets from you? She said, no, go, go online and do those. So I put the phone down and I immediately went online because I thought they're going to be people doing the same as me. They can't get the platinum tickets. We still, it doesn't mean you don't want to go and see him. Christ almighty, that's the biggest part of it. Going to see the show, isn't it? So I went straight online and they had like a bid now. You can, you can bid for the tickets or buy now. I clicked the buy now and got the ticket straight away. I got the email and then that's it. Although, strangely enough, um, the price of the tickets, they are a bit pricey, um, but actually less than what I paid to go and see at the O2 because I did buy them from, from a, a reseller's website when I took out my niece. Um, was it last year? Yes, last year when I took my niece to see them last year when she was heavily pregnant. They were really dear. They weren't as dear as that. But still, they were pricey. Um, but my credit card has only been debited by one dollar. And I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe you have to wait till the end of the bid and then it debits the rest of it. So that's my story. So I have got a front row ticket. So I'll be going to Florida um, sometime in January. I'll probably spend two weeks there. Then I can do all the Disney and Orlando stuff there as well. So that's my story. Are you there, Wendy? I am. Oh, I was so dis. You know, I was so disappointed. I know, I know. I, 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 from chatting with, you're not the only one that's disappointed because I know there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are disappointed, and I know that the tickets were sold within sixty seconds. Oh, really? As quick as that was it? Yeah. yeah um, talking, chatting with Cheryl yesterday, she was saying that. Yeah, Cheryl got one, didn't she? No. Oh, hang on a minute. Well, another Cheryl did. Must be must, right. Must have been another Cheryl. Well, hang on. Let yeah, me... I know she was going for it. She was going for it, but she didn't get one either. Um, right. There was a lady called. I forget what her name is now. But I know somebody else did get one. Right. But I see, a I lot see. of people were disappointed. I but at least you got your front row. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, 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 I went straight on there immediately. Um, now where is it? Ma I think Mary got one. Mary. You know Mary Flick? Oh, yes. I think she got one. I'm sure it was Mary. For some reason, I thought um, she... Angela. Angela Washington. That's who I'm thinking of. Oh, I don't, don't think I know Angela. Yeah. Angela. Let's have a look. Have I got Angela? Angela? No, haven't got her. Don't know, don't know Angela. But, yes, so, I mean, that's the way it goes, though. And, you know, you completely understand. Oh, for Christ's sake, the man can't meet everyone, can he, you know? No. And, um... I think some of them are a bit disappointed. I don't know whether... Um, apparently, the maximum uh, number of tickets you can buy is eight, and that's quite a lot for a platinum. Eight? You know, one person can buy eight tickets. Oh, I didn't know that. I well, thought it was well, one well, each. I didn't know until Cheryl mentioned it to me yesterday. She said, I just think that's wrong, and it is a bit unfair. So yeah. if one person buys eight tickets, there's only four left. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's what's happened. I'm just saying, yeah. you, you know... Some people can do that if they want to, apparently. My mate said to me, you know, they might come up on eBay, but I'd be very funny buying tickets off eBay. No, 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 They no. could be forgeries, you know, couldn't they, or anything like that. And they would go for a lot of money anyway. I mean, they do, they're quite expensive as it is, although it's all for charity, of course, and I understand mm -hmm. that. But, um, oh, well, never mind. But it's strange that they, they I've, I've only been debit debited $1. I was just going to mention that. I'm just wondering whether they're testing it. You know, testing your account to see if it's genuine, and then they'll debit the rest. Ah, oh, right, okay. I've some, I know some companies do do that. Yeah. Um, debit I'm, with a small amount, and I'm, then take the rest out. I think I might, I might send them off another email and um, just check that that, that that that's all gone through okay. Because yeah. cause that came up straight away. When I hit the buy now, it says, thank you, you know, you've da-da-da-da. And then I got an email straight away, and that was it. But the the... 
what's, what's it called when you it, the bids the auction the auction yeah. is for another like 57 days isn't it or something like that i'm not sure how long the yeah. auctions last i've never i've never used i've that. never used that method either i've never well, used it it's quite often i know i do know that quite often that it's yeah. worth by just getting it now like you did yes yeah uh, because the bids go up to can go up to about the same price yes yes to get it now tickets anyway yeah yeah um they do they did last time Oh well. Um, they went to, for auction. It went for about four thirty dollars or something like that. Well, and they're than... about four fifty, aren't they? They're four hundred. Four hundred. I think right. it was four hundred. Yeah, dollars. So it's about three hundred quid. But that's less than what I paid last time when I was in the O2. So that's all right. I know some people think it's a lot of money, but that's our thing, isn't it, Wendy? Yeah. You know, it is. I can't understand people. You know, I, I feel sorry for a father with two sons who both who all like football. You know, <laughs> you, well, you can say goodbye to five hundred pounds on a Saturday afternoon, and how That's many true. times during the season would you do that? Mm. You know, That's true. they spend an absolute fortune. And Manchester United don't they bring out a new kit every six months or whatever? It's ridiculous. All we get Probably. is one I'm not concert. Into no, neither am I. No. All we get is 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 one concert every couple of years. <laughs> That's right. You've got uh, you've got to enjoy it. Life's too short in it. Yeah. Although he might do another one in Orlando. Um, someone said to me, was it you? No. Might have been Cheryl. He might be might do another one in Orlando or or in Florida. Anyway, so I don't know. I don't know. It's a big place. That um, it is a big place. Yes. That uh, venue in Orlando. It's about the same size as the old two. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. I had a look the other day. <laughs> but I wonder if will it will it be the same band or what? I don't, I don't know. Because really, they've all kind of. I they, could imagine so, but hmm. I know they've all been uh, gone their own separate ways for the time being, haven't they? Yeah. While yeah. Barry gets involved with his yeah yeah musical and, and and meanwhile we're still waiting for a UK announcement. We wait and we wait. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> I, th I, th I think we've lost hope on that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's every yeah. other year, isn't it? Yeah. So my sister's she's off to this pampering thing today, where they go and do. Have you ever had one of those, Wendy? No. Do you think they do anything? Do you look younger afterwards? I think you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> that's about I, what it is, I, isn't I, it? I think you feel better about yourself. That's what I, I think that's what the benefit is. Oh, I think that's that's the same sort of thing as cosmetic surgery, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you, you see, well, honestly, you see some of them have had cosmetic surgery. Um, like that, uh, what's his name? That, that someone's mother. She's quite old now. Not as uh, older than us. Um, oh, Stallone. Jackie Stallone, that's it. Sylvester Stallone's mother. Right. You ever seen pictures of her? I don't think I have. <gasps> she looks like a monster. Her lips are like five times the size of normal lips. She's had all the fat, and she just looks really odd. Really mm, odd. Some people do go over the top with it, don't they? I wouldn't have any of that done. In my best mate Ron, he's got he's had fillers in his face already. He's only forty. <laughs> What's all that about, eh? And these are for two little lines that go from his nose to the side of his mouth. You know, have you got those? I think oh, I've got those. Oh, yeah, I've got plenty. <laughs> Just a little bit. I don't believe that for one moment. I've Wendy. got plenty of those wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing today? How's your husband all right? He's, um, <clears throat> he's not too bad today, thanks. Good. Yeah, he's had a, a couple of days where he's been uh, struggling in the morning. Yes. But today is not too bad. But thank you for asking. That's very kind of you. Okay. Yeah. I've never never spoke to him, but send him my best wishes anyway. It's horrible to I'll, be ill I will. like that. Yeah, my, I'll my... let you go and talk to the rest of you, listeners. What? Both of them. <laughs> 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 Lots of love, Wendy. Thanks, darling. All right, then. Bye-bye, my love. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. There we are. Wendy's a big um, big Barry fan as well. Um, God, I'm sort of... Oh... Oh, well. There, but there might be another occasion where I get to, where I get to meet and greet, wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Right, we've got some emails here. Oh, can I just see what's in this box? I've just... I don't even know what this is. Come from Amazon. Look now, look at the size of this box, right? A massive box has come from Amazon. I can't even remember what it is I've ordered. I love it. I love ordering stuff from Amazon. I rarely go into shops. I'm not one to go... Into, unless I'm in the States. I like go... <coughs> I like going shopping in the States. Because it's... For me, it's really cheap. 
For someone from the UK to go shopping in the States is really cheap. So, right, so this is a mass massive box. Okay. Oh, look at this, look at this. You're, you're gonna die, right? Okay, you're gonna die. Of right, so you see the size of this box, right? I know what this is now, because I remember ordering it. Okay, so it's full of this paper, okay? Full of this paper, loads and loads of paper, loads and loads of paper, and a little invoice thing. And what's in it? That. You don't know, don't even know what that is, do you? This is a blade for my lawnmower, which I repaired the other day. Remember? Size of box. How bloody ridiculous is that? Size of box, um, what's that? Two foot by one and a half foot. Size of item, two inches by a foot. How totally and utterly ridiculous is it to send something in a box that size? And this happens all the time with Amazon. I've had one DVD delivered in a box like that. Just ridiculous. Terrible, terrible way. So I bought a new blade for my um, lawnmower. It kept catching, so I had to take the, the thing apart. I'm actually, I, don't, I never thought of myself as particularly good look, good, uh, uh, good at doing DIY things. Let me just check my new blade. There we are. Brand new blade to cut my grass. Doesn't look very sharp. I suppose it is. Hang on, does it cut paper? No. <laughs> Hopefully, is it is it is it a genuine one? I don't know. It's got a little smiley face on that. Does that mean it's genuine? It's probably some Chinese copy, isn't it? Oh well. So I've got that to do as well today, as well as go and get my feet sorted. It's all go. It's all go. Right. Uh, Emails then. Gary Owen mentions when I was uh, talking that I had a black and white printer um, last week, wasn't it? He says, you have a printer that prints black and white. It's only black, boy -o. Gary. I do wonder what you do with your time sometimes, Gary. Do you, do you just go through my shows looking for thoughts all the time? Is that what you do, Gary? Eh? Shania thinks it's really stupid to send a tiny item like that in a great big box. They do it all the time, Shania. It's absolutely ridiculous and a terrible waste. What a waste of cardboard sending that blooming great thing in a box like this. But I'll tell you what, I've just realised, because usually when I send off my accounts, I have to send off my accounts because I'm self-employed to my accountant once a year, this will do me for next year, because usually I buy a box, you know, I'm going to save that for next year now. So perhaps it was a good thing they sent it after all, Shania. I won't have to buy a box next year. Um, <clears throat> a few bits and pieces from the lovely Marge this week. Because you have been a bit quiet, Marge, but you've sent in a few bits and pieces, so I'm quite pleased about that. Marge says, I listened, because I was asking last week, do you actually listen to the whole show? Because sometimes it can go on for nearly two hours. Today's show, more likely 45 minutes to an hour, OK? I listen to your show all the way through. I watch all of your six or so year archives. I watch your show sometimes two times or more. I sleep with your audios playing while I work with your audios playing. Or you sleep and, well, I mean, a lot of people have said before when they have trouble sleeping, they put one of my shows on. And that, and that, and that tends, to, tends to make them a little bit more tired. Must. My best friend Ron is usually someone that comes out with something like that. I dream of the day I go to the next life or heaven or whatever is next and find the Chris Reardon show there. <laughs> I'm an Addicts fan and a Chrysolo fan. A Chrysolo, I quite like that. A Chrysolo fan of United Kingdom talk show host and dear friend Chris Reardon. You tickle me. And you annoy me sometimes, like any good family member does. But it's just like having a wonderful brother to punch and hug at the same time. Um, she goes on to say, I, 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 I'll read it out as it says. I don't usually read these bits out. You're the best, Chris. Keep it up. Don't care what the other idiots say, whoever make fun of you. Blessings. Oh, I don't give a toss what anyone says, Marge. Don't bother me. As long as a few people are being entertained. Marge has also sent in a little bit of audio. 
which I shall be playing for you um, after I've done the other emails, okay? <clears throat> Hello to James, who says, Hi, Chris. Asphalt, which is the stuff they put on roads, I was asking if, if that's what they always put on roads, is made differently now to reduce the noise made from vehicles. It is only done on local roads round here, and the materials used are very poor, and often it needs doing again and again. Um, so, yes, I was saying, uh, there does seem to be more holes in the road now than there ever was. I know there's more vehicles on the road as well, but you kind of wonder yourself, you know, are, are, they, are they actually doing the job properly anymore, or are they cutting corners? Uh, my, my, my money's on the second one of those. As for your shows, they're great. I usually listen in full. I like to know who does a 15-minute talk show as you are never going to fit in and everything in. Well, I used to do one, actually, James. A couple of years ago, I went down to doing 10, 15-minute shows, and I was doing sort of one a day, like just 10 or 15 minutes. But then they started getting <laughs> longer, and they, got, and they were just taking over my life completely. There's only so much time you can dedicate, you know. And I found myself doing more and more. And I was rushing around trying to get this show done. Um, it was my mate again. He says, you know, you're doing too much. This is, this is just madness. Cut down to one a week. So I cut down to three a week. Then I cut down to one a week, two a week. And now we're one a week at the moment. But they, these, these, these Friday ones tend to be longer. Although at the moment I've got a run of appointments at the hospital to try and sort my feet out. Which are very, very slowly getting better. The feet are slowly getting better, OK? Sorry to hear about Richard Vobe's son. Yes, his son um, uh, recently had a, 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 a little bleed on the brain. I did send him a message and uh, he appreciated that. I also listened to his show. You and Richard do some good shows and I hope it continues. Also, just to point out what Ross said, that cars from 2009 onwards don't have a spare tyre on board. They have a foam-based punch repair kit. You have to ask for a spare tyre. I'm afraid it's some new EU ruling. Hope Katie, your cat is okay from James. Well, um, not all cars, James. Because my, um, my Toyota Yaris has a spare tyre. So I don't think it's all cars. Um, I, I, I just assumed that all cars had some sort of spare wheel. I know some of them have smaller spare wheels, don't they? You know? And you're not supposed to go more than, I don't know, 50 mile an hour or something like that. On um, on those on those other uh, uh, spare wheels, the, the little ones. Email address: join us, Chris at United Kingdom Talk. dot co. dot uk. Right, Chris at United Kingdom Talk. dot co. dot uk. And Wendy says, "Happy birthday to your sister Sharon." Yes, she's a poor old cow, Sharon. Now, isn't she? Very old, very old. She's not much fun. She's not much fun. Uncles are fun. Uncles are fun. Uncles are naughty. I was with, <laughs> with my niece, uh, my nephew and his wife yesterday, and I just kept shouting at the car, shouting out, out of the car at people as they walked past. I don't know why. Just making strange noises. Bruh, bruh, and, look, and watching them look round. They thought it was highly amusing. My sister would sit there and say, why are you doing that? She, she doesn't see the funny side. She wouldn't see the funny side of it, unfortunately. Parents are strange, aren't they? they? They just don't seem to want to have fun. Unlike me. Terry H in Leeds says, I watch all the show, no matter how long it is. Thank you, Terry. In Leeds. Here's a long one from Ross Patzelt. Hi, Chris. This is the real R to the O to the S to the S, Patzelt. What a bloody hell are you going on about now? Anyway, hope you had a great week. I've had some very good news indeed. I'm not talking about the little arrival to the Pat's outhouse. Donna says, hi, by the way. Yes, they're having another baby. Ross and his lovely lady. So that's cool. No, I'm talking about learning an incredible skill. Last week, of course, I shared my brilliant knowledge on how to change a tyre. You probably guessed it. I have no idea how to do it, really. But it was just being random. Laugh. By the way, Ross, I have to say, your, your emails are very good. All the punctuation is there, all the spellings there. Very good emails, Ross. Okay? And I'm surprised. You know, I thought you'd come across as a bit thick, to be honest. I'm impressed. 
by your English language skills. Did you get a CSE or an O-level? Anyway, back to the story. This week, I want to tell your millions of listeners, not as many listeners as, as mine, of course, to the new Real Ross Patziot Skiffle, Skiffle Show on Ustream. How to boil an egg. What's a Skiffle Show? Ross does his own show. Skif, skiffle Show on Ustream. I don't know what that is. How to boil an egg. Stage one, get yourself an egg. From a chicken, of course, or Tesco's. I'm not going to Tesco's. How dare you assume that I go to Tesco's? You assume I shop in Tesco's? How dare you? Waitrose I shop. I only shop in Waitrose. Shania says she usually watches all of the shows apart from today. That's all right, Shania. If you've got to disappear, I understand, my darling. Worry not about little old me sitting here alone with another couple of people. That's it. It's all there is. It's just a couple of people. Stage, so I don't, no, I don't go to Tesco's. Waitrose. Thank you. Stage two. Give it to your world, wife or girlfriend or boyfriend. You see, there you go again, sticking the knife in, Ross. I don't have a wife or girlfriend or boyfriend. No one wants me. I'm unloved. Nobody. Even the cat walks off sometimes. <sighs> Stage two, give it to your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend and tell them to boil it. And after five minutes later, you have a boiled egg. How fantastic. We just learn a new thing every week from your emails, Ross. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by your many skills. Not only are you a mechanic, you are clearly a chef as well. Perhaps you could go on, uh, have your own program on um, the television, you know, one of those awful cookery programs. Do you think you'd do better than Gordon Ramsay? Would you swear as much as him? I imagine you'd be even worse, actually. And you'd probably blow off while you're cooking people's food. That's awful. And burp. How awful. We don't have people burping and passing wind in Waitrose, you know. Doesn't happen in there. Never. Next week, I'll be telling everyone how to wire a plug when my mate at Tesco's depot shows me how. This is like big knowledge coming from the biggest rosser on the WWW. It could be the real Ross feature on your show. Well, it could be. Depends how good you are at sending one in every week, Ross. Or are you going to be one of those people that says, yeah, I'll do it every week, and then it just suddenly stops because you can't be bothered anymore. Or will it continue? Are you as reliable as me? That's the question, Ross. I don't know about that. Let's see how many of these letters you send in now, between now and Christmas. If you manage one every week, I will be very impressed. Very impressed. He says, yeah, I saw Ian Lee's latest podcast. Ian Lee is a, a, a radio host here in the UK. You either like him or you don't. I don't. I don't like his stuff. A lot of people do. Millions of people like his stuff. Um, it's a personal thing. I saw Ian Lee's latest podcast. Had a bit of the old... Uh, sorry. Yeah. I saw Ian Lee's latest podcast. Had a bit of the old technical trouble last week. And sent my old mate an email asking him if he wanted a bit of advice on how to set his system up. But then on his show, he said something about have, having had a problem with his channel settings and EQs and limiters, whatever they are. I mean, who needs all that crap? I bought a £2.49 Vantage mic from Maplin's. Should have been a fiver. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to disappoint you about that, actually, Ross. But I did hear your little podcast, your, your, your little video show you did. Wasn't impressed with the sound quality, and I know that will pain you to hear that. The sound quality of your podcast has always been quite good. On the YouTube video, I'm sorry, mate, you let the side down. Wasn't as good as it usually is. It's the microphone. You've bought a cheap microphone. Never, ever. You do I, I agree with you here. Equalizers. What's he say? Um, EQs and limiters. I haven't got any of that here. There's, there's a mixer. But actually, the EQ isn't used on it. This goes out flat. The microphone 
is the most important part of your setup, other than the computer, I think. Got to spend money on a microphone, Ross. What happened to the other one you used to use? That was all right. Can't you use that? Please sort your sound out. Thank you. Ross says, he had a bit of a joke with me too and sent this reply. Mr. Pretz out. Stop bothering me. I don't remember the time you called my show on Absolute Radio. It cannot have been that memorable, and no, I'm not interested in meeting up. As I've worked in the entertainment industry for over 15 years, your advice on technical matters is a little limited. Also, I cannot help you with issues of what sounds like low self-esteem. Very happy that you have a new baby, you and everyone else. By the way, it's Ian with two eyes. What a laugh my old mate Ian is. It was really him. See you around, big buddy. Big buddy? Big buddy? Are you suggesting I've got fat? I'm not surprised after yesterday's car free and subway within the space of seven hours of each other. But I mean, the subway, it was all salad stuff. Just a tiny little bit of cheese. And then cucumbers and lettuce and tomatoes. Oh, and lots of onions. I love onions. <gasps> I love onions. I like to eat an onion sandwich and then go right up to people's faces and talk to them. Shania's going. Bye, Shania. Shania's got to leave. Won't be anyone left in a minute. <laughs> See you, Shania. Love you loads, darling. Have a nice time at work, all right? Um, see you around big buddy that's from Ross and uh, if you want to have a little listen to his show then just go to mixcloud.com uh, I'll tell you what uh, old um, uh, our Marge listen Marge listen E-R Marge write this down mixcloud m-i-x-c-l-o-u-d dot com so www.mixcloud.com forward slash Ross Pat Zelt 2 that's R-O-S-S P A T Z E L T two. All right, mixcloud.com forward slash Ross Patzelt two R O W S -S P A T Z E L T two. I've known Ross for oh, quite a number number of years now. He's done um, a lot of online radio stuff, the same as myself. We've both been doing it for quite some time now, and we enjoy doing it. We enjoy doing it. And if, if a couple of people are entertained, then it's all worth doing, isn't it? OK, finally on the show today, I did say it was be a short one. We got a little little email uh, uh, vo voice message that uh, Marge has sent in. So let's have a little listen to this. Hello, Chris. I hope you can hear me OK. I'm running the air conditioning fans. Trying this MP3 little... Uh, thing well, I, <laughs> when you're recording yourself it's hard to talk though um, and I don't have my teeth in so I may mumble <laughs> no I thought about what to say and I'm thinking about uh, telling you something about my past I used to be in a riding club I had a horse um, she was a thoroughbred what they call thoroughbred quarter horse uh, stood about 15 three hands a hand is like four inches so basically I could put my chin on her back if I stood beside her you know she's pretty tall but she's a very good horse and most of the time I just pull her up to a fence you know and climb on over and get on <laughs> I was kind of uh, short and fat you know that's how that goes but anyway in the riding club uh, we had what they call um, this uh, square dance on horseback a group of us about eight of us I think well they had two extras but actually eight eight total you know, on their horses and we performed at rodeos and play days uh, play day is just when we go out and you know use our horses to you know run the barrels and do things like that but um, roping uh, goats things which now I probably wouldn't do anymore but anyway we had a lot of fun and uh, my horse I did quite a bit I, I bought her she was three years old and um, hand trained well she was already trained a little bit she was off the racetrack uh, she, she was bought as a colt and they had her on the racetrack but as they were coming through Oklahoma she got sick with shipping fever and they get a big old knot underneath her chin and she was run through a what they call a horse cow sale and uh, they were auctioning her off so 
I looked at her, and she's very healthy looking. I mean, other than the big knot under her chin, and they told, said, well, they thought they'd just sell her for dog food. You know, that's all she was being sold for. And I bid on her, and I paid $275 for a horse that had been paid, prob- I think they said they gave uh, $3,500 for her as a colt, but they thought she was going to die. Anyway, um, as she got a little older, and I started, they had just started her on the track, so she didn't know much of anything except being run, run down the racetrack, and uh, I just put her in my front yard. But anyway, uh, I'm going to not go too much more, but um, I bought a pig for a companion, <laughs> and she, her and this pig would, would just be side by side. I mean, the pig, you know, it, as it grew up, it it just root in, in the ground, and she'd walk along and graze the grass, and the pig rooted in the ground. Well, one day I, I heard a squeal, you know, and I looked down, and what had happened, the horse had wandered a little far off to the back of the place, and they wasn't paying attention, see, and the, the pig had gone the opposite direction, and they lost each other. And the pig was squealing, and the horse was squealing, they they were looking for each other, and the horse was a... a uh, her name was Twelfth Fly. I called her Dosey. She would, she come running and she met her pig, and all oh, the horse she would go, oh, 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 and the pig, oh, all oh, the nuzzling. They took their noses and ru- you know nuzzled each other. I mean, I just died laughing. I said she lost her pig. <laughs> anyway, that's one of my grand adventures. Um, I don't know how big a fall this is going to be. I just thought I'd tell you about my horse uh, years. Uh, I, I rode her in the parades, uh, like I said, and I was a member of the riding club. And um, She was 23 years old when she finally went to horsey heaven. So, But she, uh, she, I, could, I could do anything with that girl. I even made a homemade, um, um, gosh, I can't think what they're called. Now, two-wheeled... Um, my brain just went dead. We'll buy one. I have that happen every once in a while. Cart. I made a home. I made my a cart myself. I welded it. Uh, I learned how to weld when I used to work on, in tank and toolboxes at a manufacturing plant. Anyway, I made it to cart. I trained her within one week and uh, went on a ten mile track. When I came ha- back, <laughs> the one of the welds broke. And she stepped across, and I, I had already, you know, wrote, uh, trained her from the ground up. I mean, she knew everything. She stood perfectly still while I unhitched her. I said, <laughs> she'd have been a crazy horse. She'd probably tore up everything. Well, this is a this is long enough. I, I hope you don't mind me rambling. I just thought I'd tell you something about my horsey past. And um, I wanted to publicly say I'm sorry about the letter last week. I told you in Facebook about you ragging on <laughs> Tracy. Uh, I didn't mean, you know, to say that. I shouldn't have said that. I, I'm kind of sensitive sometimes. Uh, I've kind of been abused, so I think other people abuse. And I thought, well, well, Chris, don't abuse nobody. What am I even writing that? So I'm going to edit my letters a little better. Next time I write you one, I'm going to re-read it and, and uh, watch what I say because my, my brain doesn't work with my, my hands and my mouth sometimes. You know. But anyway, thank you, and I'll I'll see you if you however you want to play this, or if you, if it's too long, just just forget it. Um, have a good day from Oklahoma, Oklahoma, where the winds come, come sweeping, sweeping down, down the plains. Da <laughs> da. There we are, little little MP3 message there from uh, Marge. That's fantastic, Marge. Five minutes is really cool. Five minutes is a really cool length to send in like that. And so I'm so pleased you did. Um, I, I, t- I try not to abuse people other than celebrities. Celebrities are out there. They're in the public. They are there to be abused. They love the limelight. They absolutely love the limelight. As indeed I do. You know, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't like a little bit of spotlight on myself. You know, let's be honest with it. Except I'm honest with that. I will tell you that. When these celebrities come along and they say, oh, no, no, well, well, you know, we just want to be ordinary people and all that, what a load of old rubbish that is. What a load of old rubbish that is. And it, eh? Keep seeing David Beckham everywhere at the moment, you know, on all these advertise. Ad- what's he advertising now? Sky television now. There's a picture of him. And he's looking a bit haggard. He really is. Come on, get rid of David Beckham now, please. We want to see something young. 
We want to see something nice and young, sort of 25 to 30 advertising, things like that. Cristiano Ronaldo, let's see him in a few pairs of underpants and things like that, please, on billboards all over the place. That's what we want to see. David Beckham, I'm sorry, you passed it now. You're pa we've seen it all. We've seen, there's nothing else you can show us that's going to impress us. Please go away. And your wife, and your miserable wife as well. You know, oh, she's so miserable. So celebs are there to be abused and bashed. Absolutely, as indeed I am. If you want to bash me, send in your email and bash me, okay? Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, very interesting about your horse there, Marge. And I, I felt a little bit of pain when you said they usually chop them up for dog food. Isn't, isn't it? I just... Uh, it's, it's the old vegetarian coming out in me again, I'm afraid. I just, just hate it, the fact that little living beings are cut up and used as food all the time. Most people, they say, oh, I don't want to think about it. You know, if you had a horse looking like a horse in the supermarket maybe not so much a horse in this country, but say a pig. If there was a pig in the supermarket wrapped up in cling film in the freezer, would you buy that? Or do you buy it because it doesn't look like a pig? I, I just can't, can't be doing all that um, murdering animals business and all that business. Um, but with a horse, my sister loves horses. One of her dreams was to have a horse. She hasn't been on one for years and years. Um... But she, she did love horses. I was a bit asthmatic, asthmatic towards one. I went to this thing in Florida um, years ago. It was like a... You, you went in this big building. It was like... Um, and you had to sit down food. Okay? And it was like a horse show in the middle. And all these horses come in. Well, of course, me... I start going... <gasps> I thought, well, well, why is that? You know, there's no dogs or cats there. Of course, all this fur was flying all over the place. I got the asthma, so I had to go outside. And hey presto, I walked outside. There was about ten others all going, <gasps> all of us out there couldn't breathe. <laughs> but such beautiful animals, horses, aren't they? Don't you think? Beautiful, beautiful animals. Anyway, that's it from the show today. Uh, thanks very much for uh, watching and listening. Don't forget you can send in an email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Be lovely to hear from you, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you want to join us live, we're here every Friday morning at 10.30 UK time, OK? Every Friday morning at 10.30 UK time. If you want to know where to find us on Fridays at 10.30 UK time, go to the main United Kingdom Talk website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. See you next Friday. Bye-bye now.